Hello everyone, welcome to The Weeb Initiative, I'm your host, The Weeb. This is the show where every other week I'll be talking about anime, manga and everything in between. This week I'll be talking about, following my last episode, the second season of Symphon Gear, also known as Senki Densho Symphon Gear G. Uh, first off, why they call it G and have a letter instead of, I don't know, two, second season or whatever? I would like to know too, but that's beside the point. Uh, let's get started. So first off, the disclaimers, I'll be talking about a whole lot of spoilers. This season, uh, differently from the first one, does not have many um, plot twists. Uh, many plot twists. The first one had made one major plot twist. The second one is more or less straightforward, really. And that's basically it for the disclaimers. Going for the um, stats, the anime was aired from July 2013 to September 2013. It has also the 13 slash 12 episodes with the last episode being a one hour special. And basically the same studio, so Satellite. Um, more in front of this we don't have the um, supporting studios for the li licensing and stewardship of the music is the same thing and well let's get st started with the story really because this is the I would say the last not the last really but the most important change that we will see in the development of the series uh, for its whole, right? So, starting off, we start uh, three months later after the end of season one, so three months later after the um, lunar incident, the lunar attack, and we get to see the first episode, we get to see Chris and Hibiki working to transport uh, Dr. Ver and the Solomon Kane that in the sub was changed to staff. I don't know why, but that's just a minor detail I picked up on. I don't know if they chose to do that for the um, American release or whatever. Anyways, so we get to see them w working f to protect this guy in a big train with a whole lot of uh, other agents of the second division, uh, the disaster division, the uh, undercover agency they work for basically. And while this is happening, we see uh, Tsubasa work preparing to uh, to have a live performance in the same place they they basically ended the the first season, the Sky Dome, I think they they call it. And feature, featured in this live performance, it is the this new uh, upcoming artist that's called Maria. And cutting to the chase, they started the performance. They they play one music for um, us audience in the anime. It's a really good duet. I think for the most part they sing well, really, really well together. And it turns out that actually Maria summons a whole lot of noise in the middle of the audience for no apparent reason. For no apparent reason. Uh, she comes out, summons the noise, but the noise do doesn't attack, does not attack the, the audience itself. It just stands there for the most part. And she basically, as this is a really important concert, they are basically live broadcasting to the whole world and all. And she comes out with this declaration of war that she's part of a, it's a terrorist cell mate, really, called Fine. So Fine <laughs> went to, from the soul of a, an ancient priestess to the name of a terrorist cell, apparently. And they demand territory from all the countries in 24 hours. So basically, it's undoable. But 
the important bit is that while she's there uh, declaring war basically and threatening everyone in the world, she also does not attack anyone really and let the audience be evacuated except for obviously uh, Tsubasa herself. And a whole lot of things happen and all. The major thing we get to see is that uh, eventually Hibiki and Chris arrive. Tsubasa gets to transform without the live broadcast. So they have the, this kind of... I would say it's n not realistic as a matter of fact. But they have this thing that they can't reveal the the identities of the Symphon Gear users because after the first season the Symphon Gear actually became a public knowledge and the whole thing about the Ryoko the Ryoko theory and their may most of their discoveries to that point became public but the identities of the ones that actually saved the world the ones that wield the Symphon Gear were not revealed although you would see if there is... Uh, they don't use masks, right? So if there was to be, um, I don't know, a recording maybe of someone with a cell phone, you would imagine, you could see it's Tsubasa that uses one of the Symphon Gear. That's a, a major inconsistency that they just gloss over. I think it's most for the um, fact that they don't want to actually enter that field of discussion in the midst of the plot because they just uh, shove it aside because the, there's there are better things to say better things to show and it would end up being wasted time for the animation and maybe dilute the overall experience of the fighting and the music and all I, that's my opinion really it may be uh, it may become something that may annoy some people but to me at the very least it's I just got used to it and whatever. It never really comes up again, so we, we can live without it. So, Chris and Hibiki arrive at the scene, so Tsubasa is fighting Maria. A and this is a, a major, major thing, right? Maria also summons a Symphon Gear, the same way the, the girls do. And she summons a Dark Gangnir. So it's the same it's the same relic that Hibiki uses. It's identical, they call it identical from the get-go. And she shows a whole lot more mastery than Hibiki shows, really. She can actually spawn the spirit itself. She even uses a whole lot of the there's like a cape for the for her version of Gangnir that she uses a lot. It becomes uh, most of the parts of the anime that she uses both the, the spear and the cape at the same time. It's most of like the Batman cape with um, more, I don't know, um, how can I say that? You, She has more control over its form, but also uh, uh, when she combines both, the par both parts of the cape and the spear, it becomes a lot like Meta Knight from Smash Bros. Mainly the the spinny attack, if you ever played Smash. A anyways, so we get to see Maria and also the the two, uh, let's say, not assistants, but the two partners of Maria in this um, terrorist cell, that is Kirika and Shirabe, both also wielding Symphon Gears. Uh, Shirabe is using. Let me grab my notes actually. Shirabe is using Shu Shagana and Kirika is using Igalima. Where they, uh, do they get these n names from, right? So, from my minimal research, aka look into the wiki, uh, both of them are the sons, uh, are the children for, from uh, Sumerian god. And, and also, yes, um, from this point on, I would just say. All the references to relics they use in the show are 100 to... Uh, I mean, they are based on and of mythological weapons, 
things, uh, relics itself. But th these two in specific are the two that I really did not know what the actual fuck there were. Not even the wiki itself has a good explanation for Igalima. Either way, I I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, so they basically fight and you see that although Maria wants to fight Tsubasa, she does not have the, um, the um, resolve to actually fight to the death. And also it becomes clear that for some, for some kind of unknown reason at that point, they have a time limit on their powers for whatever reason. So they spawn a, a how can I say that? A multiplying kind of noise. So even if you attack it, it will divide and mitosis and all that stuff. So we learn about this, the new um, kind of hack that Hibiki got after the end of season one. There is the set harmonics kind of uh, swan song. So basically she can get this one song from another Symphon Gear user and using her own body as a catalyst, taking all the strain on her body itself, she can up its power and release it way more powerful than it already is. So the, the idea is basically uh, Bo Chris, Tsubasa and Hibiki use their swan songs, but Hibiki can focus the three swan songs into a huge attack and basically just uh, exterminate the whole thing. It takes a toll on her body, yes, but uh, that is still to come up. So going after that, we get, and this already I have to put on um, basic explanation. For the most part in this season, uh, the end goal, right, is to wed, and this is already a spoiler, big spoiler alert, yes, the end goal of this season is to wed the two girls to the group of Symphon Gear. So it's basically to turn Maria, Kirika, and Shirabe into Symphon Gear users for the second division, become friends, and the whole Maho Shoujo friendship canon kind of thing. The thing is, most of the episodes are focused on the intern conflicts of the terrorist Selfine because we, from the get go, almost from the second, I think, episode forward, we get to see that actually the Dr. Ver that they helped transport and guard in the first episode is actually working with the terrorists and has stolen the Solomon Kane, the Solomon Staff at this point. The, the important thing to know is that the Solomon Staff is the one relic that can open the Babylonia armory. Uh, basically, it's the one thing that summons noise and controls noise. So, basically, she, he has the, um, the key to chaos in humanity and everything else. That being said, we get to know now, we we know all the second division, the side characters of the school, Miku, Hibiki, Tsubasa, Chris, uh, Genjiro, that's, that's the commander and all. We get to know then the terrorist cell, so there is Maria, Shirabe and Kirika, there is, uh, they call Mum, uh, her name is Natasha, I don't know the surname, whatever. And then there's Do Dr. Ver, that is this uh, crook scientist that uh, deceives everyone and stole the Solomon King. The thing is, right, from the gecko, we get that Maria Shirabe and Kirika have this thing where they don't actually have compatibility with the Symphon Gear and have to use a drug to up their compatibility. So it's basically doping before the fight. So that's why they have this really short amount of time with their Symphon Gears at max, at max output. And they, it's not like the other girls that have Phonic Gang that sustains their, their um, armor and weapons. And so they have a timer, basically. And the, um, the drug is pretty not... It's basically a plot convenience to say they don't have any time left. Anyways, the thing is, the girls need the drug from the, this 
the crook scientist, Dr. Ver, and also um, they call Mum. Natasha is afflicted with uh, unnamed, I think it's unnamed for the most part, uh, disease that basically she has a frail body, she lost one, one eye in an accident, and they show all this, uh, the whole thing about their backstory more or less. The show mostly just Maria because Maria is the turning point in the whole thing about they fighting as a terrorist cell to their goal. And more or less, they just add Dr. Ver because they need the expertise in drugs, biochemistry, and whatever. That being said, what is their goal? And this is a part where I need to say the anime does not do a good job in the plot department in this season on my in my opinion because the um, the plot gets really uh, how can I say they do a lot of curves to re reach the point because it seems and obviously th this is just my impression but it really does seem that they did if not all most of the end, end game writing at the end of the end. So from the get-go we get that they want to activate this uh, frontier they call it to protect humanity from the fall of the moon because apparently they found out at some point because of something that the moon's going to fall in, on the earth even though we had the whole thing in season one the moon would eventually fall on the earth uh, regardless of the interference of Fini, the interference of the massive ray gun we had in season one that shot out a piece of the moon, and the fact that Fini eventually pushed, uh, pulled the piece of the moon towards the Earth. The thing is, the moon is going to fall on the Earth and destroy everything. So they need this frontier to repel the moon, basically, and they never really tell whether they will destroy the moon or just stop it from falling and this is the part that I say they they seem to be writing the things as they go for the most part but that's not the end all be all of the whole thing in the midst of that we see that the girls uh, Maria, Kirika and Shirabe they have their reservations towards this f whole thing about being terrorists because you see that they have during the whole season, during their whole time as terrorists, you see that they have this resistance to kill people, so they don't want to uh, actually uh, sacrifice people to to their cause. They see the sacrifices as... Kirika... Uh, Shirabe says it is uh, hypocrisy, because you, you end up killing people to save people, so it's kind of hypocritical, but... At the same time, the, the thing is, they don't want to dirty their hands and they they don't have the, the um, resolve to actually sacrifice their, what they call in some parts, the, the humanity they have to get their goal. So basically, the means does not, does not justify the ends. That being said, uh, Dr. Ver is the complete opposite. He's basically a psychopath from the, from the very start. You see that he treats all the girls with this thing and at some point you see that although he works with them he has really a whole nother vision of the end goal they have even before they actually reveal what the heck the frontier is that being said we got introduced to all these things and then we get the first major major conflict between the two parts so, at some point, the terrorist group needs to activate the frontier, but they need two things. They need a, a relic that I don't know how in the hell you pronounce that. It's basically a disc, but it's turned already into a symphon gear for whatever reason. And they need to draw out the power of this relic to break a seal to reactivate the frontier. And also, to power the frontier, they need the... Uh, the Nephilim, that is a relic that they activated with um, a reaction from the combination of the three swan songs that Hibiki did in the first fight. 
that being said, they activate the Nephilim. What's the Nephilim? The Nephilim is basically uh, a relic, basically an AI. It's a, they say it's an autonomous biological whatever thing. It's a robot for the, um, the nitty gritty. It's basically a robot that has magical powers. That's mostly it. So what's the real big deal? He needs to feed off relic parts. So basically it translates to he eats sinful years as food. And that basically springs up to a whole lot of things. Uh, so first the, the side of the villains, right? So they need this because relics are really, really, really rare. They are a small group. So the Basically, all the terrorists are just the guys that I told you about. There, there are no, uh, let's say, back offs guys or some someone actually funding them. And for what's worth, the only relics they know that exists are the the ones that are with Division Two, aka all the Sinfon gears from Hibiki, Tsubasa, and Chris. So that's basically they either steal it or they feed their their own relics that's that's the whole thing that being said we get this fairly wholesome episode that um shows that the girls from the terrorists are actually just normal girls that if fate was i would not say more fair but was more fortunate for them they would have lived uh happier lives and the end all be of the whole thing they enter the school festival of the school the girls from Division 2 goes to. So, they have all the more or less cliches. So, there's the, takoya the takoyaki stall and all the food and whatever. And they end up, I don't know, uh, in this, there's this one scene, right? That uh, Chris is still adapting to school life and the normal life of an, uh, of an actual teenage girl. And her friends uh, basically uh, convince her to participate into a um, school singing competition. Although she did not want it at first because she's at Sundere. And she end up, ends up uh, competing on it. It's fairly good. The um, music is fairly good too. Because, again, all the voice actors in this <laughs> goddamn anime are actual singers. They... The singing is pretty good, but anyways, and, and so she ends up going to it, uh, competing and all, and basically winning. But then they open a challenge for the public to challenge the champion, and the the two that go there, Kirika and Shirabe, and they also, I don't remember if it is, but they sing a song from Zoe Wings, so it's a callback, and the. The whole thing ends up with them uh, having to re uh, Kirika and Shirabe having to retreat uh, early from the competition because um, they were discovered by uh, foreign soldiers. So the the place they were hiding on gets discovered, and in the midst of that, uh, Maria sees um, Doctor Ver cruelty towards uh, normal humans. So basically. They have this attack. They, they use uh, he uses vo noise to kill off the soldiers that are attacking the terrorist base. But also when he kind of goes out just to see what's up with the outside, when there are innocent people passing by and kids, he summons noise on them too. So it's pretty messed up and all. They don't actually show the kids dying, but you get the idea. So they, they retreat early, basically, and then they kind of challenge the Sinfon Gear because they, the girls the girls from the second division already know they are the ones they fought. So they basically come to this uh, ladies' agreement to duel at some point in the future, near future, like tomorrow, let's say. It comes out that the challenge tomorrow is actually a trap. They did not... They did not intend it to be a trap. They actually wanted to duel it for the for actual reasons, like for uh, fair and square. 
but Dr. Van intervenes and creates this trap with a drug that's called anti-linker that basically it's the downer for linker so it inhibits or um, decreases the compatibility between the person and the relic. The girls be, uh, come out with drawbacks uh, and basically to use the, the armor and the weapons it becomes a strain in their body and it ends up with them fighting the Nephilim. Why? Because the plan that Dr. Ver had at the, from the very start was to actually use the Nephilim to defeat the, the Symphon Gear because if the Symphon Gear armor is all relic so you can eat more if you just eat the relic active if that makes sense. Anyways, the thing is the fight is pretty good to to some point that Hibik tries to punch this I don't if it's kind of a dinosaur more or less I, I don't have a good rep, good example of what it appears to be it's a, a kind of Digimon without eyes whatever the thing is she punches the guy and, and he he eats her arm out it's pretty horrific right it's it's a really messed up scene and all and that's why I, I like this this anime. This anime does not is not afraid to show these really graphic kind of things they can, that can, they can show on TV, right? So, anyways, so she loses her arm, and in the next two minutes, you see that the um, relic inside her heart. Because remember, Hibiki's Gangnir is actually relics that relic parts that they, he she has. After the incident, because Kanade's armor shattered and hit her. The thing is, the whole thing goes berserk. Uh, Hibiki enters the berserk mode, which we saw in season one when she used Durandaru. And for lack of a better word, they basically use the. Um, if you ever watched Naruto Shippuden for, for the. I don't know what season. It is the same kind of model they used for. Naruto releasing the Forte QB, that that same transformation kind of style. So Hibiki kind of transforms into this berserk kind of beast, and from sheer force of will, she regrows her arm outright. It, it's not even a problem. She just grows it out again. Whatever, Bo SpongeBob, <laughs> SpongeBob style. The, the thing is, right? So they defeat the the Nephilim, it's kind of pretty graphic, she dismantles it basically and throws his heart and, and this is a big detail, the heart's still beating, she just whacks it out and throws it away. The thing is, she then kind of nearly kills Ver, but Ver kind of escapes and then Tsubasa and Chris hold her back until she like releases all her energy and come back to normal. After she comes back to normal, she's hospitalized because it may have got a big strain on her body. And then we got the main con inside conflict of the good guys in the season that I hate. I, I, I hate this kind of conflict. The thing is, right, they find out that actually uh, Hibik's body is fusing with the relic in a much faster rate than they thought it would. And for whatever reason, if it fuses anymore, she will die and also the more she uses it the more it grows on her it more refuses so basically what's the order don't let her fight because she will die but they don't actually tell her that from the get-go and and this is really an inconsistency i don't know what what the hell but for whatever reason at this first point of contact with this problem the commander just tells Tsubasa about this, not even Chris. And the thing is, when Tsubasa goes to tell Hibiki after she is kind of recovered, she uses the the worst, worst anime cliche they have. That is the make them hate you so they won't want to help you. That's just a terrible approach to anything. If you are just honest and tell her, Yo, you will die if you keep fighting. It would be so much better, right? So much better. But being as it is, they 
Tsubasa just throws it out like, don't fight anymore, you are useless to us. And then Chris becomes angry with her and Hibiki is basically just lost at this point because the only thing she has as um, as an existence for her, uh, let's say, her desire in life is to help people. And now the way that she could help people, she cannot u- do anymore. So basically, they took their re- her reason to leave, and that's the that's the my God, why wouldn't you just tell her outright? But I'm get getting sidetracked. From that point on, there is this whole thing where Miku wants to um, cheer up Hibiki because, well, you you want to cheer up your love interest because Miku is his true best girl or the main wife either way, and then we get. This next part is kind of, kind of, kind of a mess. At this point, the um, terrorists don't have actually the uh, returning a bit in time. Okay, just just a, a little bit. So after the Nathaniel is is basically defeated, uh, the bad guys lose one of the two parts they need. So they lose the Nathaniel because the Nathaniel is basically killed. But as plot convenience will have it, or fortune, or whatever, uh, there from his stumbles across the battlefield and um, getting away from the Symphon Gear users, he finds the beating heart of the Nathling that still works because it does not stop to work after it's disconnected because it's the it's basically a source of power so they say it does not end more or less. Anyways, he finds the heart, he returns to the new terrorist HQ and for whatever reason, <laughs> let's get a little bit back because the story is a whole lot of messes around and around. Let's get from the beginning, from the beginning of the story of the the story itself. So it is a whole lot of back lore. They they tell it about it in the whole anime. You can piece it together, you know. So at some point in time, there was this one federal agency of the United States that used to research relics. At some point, the guys inside this agency of researching relics in the United States got together and basically flew out of the US to fund their own their own research because the government was using their research for whatever reason they didn't want to. Because they found that the government was lying to the people because the moon was going to fall much earlier than the government wanted to, the, the public to say. So, to see. So, basically, they wanted to stop the, the fall of the moon. And to that end, they had to do some weird stuff. The first one was they wanted to uh, capture Phineas Soul inside a, a new person they had control um, over. So they got all these orphans, and basically they do t- they did some tests to see if the orphans could uh, carry a Phoenix Soul or if the f- uh, Phoenix Soul would awaken in them. So basically, the end of y'all, these kids were Maria, Shirabe, and Kirika, and also Maria's little sister, Serena. The thing is, at some point they go through this whole stuff of uh, developing Linker as a drug to get the girls to use Symphon Gear to get a uh, phone game to try to awaken Fini to then uh, get the Frontier running. So they already had tested the Nephilim before. The thing is, when they first tested it, the Nephilim went berserk and basically killed a whole lot of people and all. And to reset it, uh, at the moment there was a whole emergency, the Nephilim was destroying the lab, and they came to the sudden conclusion that someone needed to use a swan song to reset it. The one who sacrificed herself to do that was Maria's little sister, Serena, and basically that's the, the whole trauma that Maria kind of got the, the resolves to go forward with the Frontier plan to to validate the wishes of her sister 
to grant the wishes of her sister, really. And and basically that's where we are today. So there are three kids, basically Maria, Maria Shirabe and, and Kirika, that may or may not have Finesso inside them and are simple here users that need link, Linker to, to activate. The thing is, at this point, they were trying to sell that Maria had Finesso inside her. And so she was the second Fine in this modern age we, we live in. But that's a lie. That's a lie because that's a lie. They do, did not find any proof that any of the kids they used the tests on uh, Awakened Finesso. And basically they just sold that lie to uh, put fear and, into people and to try to stir the terrorist cell when it was bigger uh, towards the bigger bigger picture towards the objective of activating the frontier and save humanity the thing is at some point they just um, dr ver discovers that uh, maria does does not actually have finis so because natasha knows that and they kind of discuss it because not even maria at that point would know that finis so wasn't inside her so the thing is uh, dr ver at this point is basically fed up with everything and just comes comes back with the the Netflix heart straight out like I'm the boss now <laughs> and so the thing is <laughs> it's a whole lot of foot cracking from then on uh, at some point Kirika and Shirabe are doing whatever and Kirika kinda notices that she has the powers of Fini so she comes to this assailing conclusion that she her soul is going to be erased because Finn is going to take over. And that is something that we can vouch for. We we saw that on season one, uh, Ryoko, as she was, was that way, way before we even met her because Finn was behind her ever since uh, some point in time before the anime even starts. That's the thing we, we can really see. So... To that point, there is a whole lot of um, conflicts going on. So none of the girls want to be terrorists because they don't want to kill anyone. Kirika is now uh, on the, do's, the doomsday clock on herself because she knows her soul is in danger. Uh, and it is um, an absolute. It's not reversible. And that's basically it. And now Ver c comes out with this thing where we are going to do this. So the next thing after he uh, recovers the heart, they fly out to the, some part of the ocean and try to activate the, the, the disc relic that they have stored in to open the seal on the frontier. They do not succeed because it does not have enough power to actually break the seal and so they go back to the drawing board the thing is uh, now going back 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 to the to the thing about he became uh, not being able to fight because she, she would die and Miko trying to cheer up her friend they go to a date in the aquarium that is inside, I, and I I don't know Tokyo. Okay, if it is uh, a important landmark of Tokyo, I'm sorry, I don't know that. They go inside this aquarium that is, from what I got, in the middle of a, in the middle floors of a tower, and up uh, in the upper floors there is a meeting going on between uh, Nata Mom. Maria and the US government because Natasha wants out of this whole terrorist thing and wants to free the girls from this cross she basically uh, locked to them to carry but then the negotiation goes sour goes south because Ver interferes summons a whole lot of noise the attack's huge Hibiki can't at this point activate Gangnir out of uh, restraint and basically Tsubasa and Chris are getting there getting there <laughs> so it devolves to a point that 
a whole lot of things that are destroyed. Maria finally gets kind of the resolve to kill people. She actually kills um, soldiers that come to attack her and, and Natasha. And the, the, the whole thing just works uh, parallel to, to one another, really close to one another. And there comes this part where part of the tower comes down and Hibiki basically falls. So, But he, Miku grabs her hand at the last minute. And so they have this really touch, uh, really touchy moment that I need you will uh, I need to save you, but you don't want to be saved because you want to save other people and you die doing that. And basically, basically, uh, as Hibiki falls because she end up falling because Miku is not strong, she activates Gangnir, uh, uses her no fall damage boots basically to just wreck the ground, but take no damage, whatever. And when she comes, uh, she looks back to save Miku from the tower come down, the part that Miku was explodes and Hibiki is just destroyed at that point. The, the mental is obliterated from the fact that she, her wife was dead. I, I say like that, but it's actually pretty like, oh my god, what just happened? The thing is, with all these things happening, uh, they finally tell Hibiki what's ha what the hell, what the hell is happening? Why she cannot continue fighting, and so, so she's restrained from using Gangnir anymore. But also, Miku is missing, and they find out that actually Miku is was kidnapped for whatever reason, and so we get the oh boy. There is this whole training montage because they need to do that because it's funny and because it's some kind of comedy relief because if they really did push out everything you would say it's rushed. It's rushed either way but it's less rushed this way in my opinion. Anyways, so they have this whole uh, montage about training uh, so the commander goes out with Tsubasa, Chris and, and Hibiki to train and they do all this uh, cliched stuff from the movies so punch meat in the freezer the rocky stair climb and, and everything like that and then we cut back to the villains and we see that actually Miku was kidnapped by Maria because Maria actually saved Miku but then Ver kind of takes advantage of Miku's um, kindness, I would say, towards her friend uh, Hibiki and makes her use um, the relic they had, the um, disc relic, as her Symphon Gear. Basically, it's, they are actually use a, some kind of implant to, to work her brain out, so it's pretty messed up. And more or less, they have a big fight in the middle of the ocean because they want to activate the the seal. Because turns out the one force that you can always count on is phonic gain. So the, he basically just forced a person to use a symphon gear to break the seal of the frontier. Basically, at this point, uh, Chris and Tsubasa have to spare both. De uh, defend themselves against noise and capture and they end up capturing uh, Shirabe because Shirabe and, and Kirika are in this conflict between Shirabe not wanting Kirika to do the bad stuff she's actually doing because she is going to um, with Ver's uh, way of doing things and, and she's clearly against it, anyone would but she's um, how can I say that She's going with him because she has this vision that she will leave something behind to be remembered for. Whatever, man. Uh, minor conflict, anyways. More or less. The thing is, at some point, Miku ha uses this uh, really strange Symphon Gear that has the power to uh, wipe out the energy and the relics because apparently the one weapon to destroy them always a weapon like any other and Hibiki has like a timer to fight Miku and when the timer is 
when the timer is really, really, really close to to going out, she's the middle of the fight. They are trading blows, and Hibiki is really trying to uh, contain her body because at this point, the strain on her body is so great that she overheats, like actual overheating. And there are all these, let's say, uh, pieces of rock that are growing out of her her skin. But at some point, Miku uses the the let's say the power of her symphon gear to fire a laser that that the um, the power to to wipe out the relic powers and the relics themselves. To then reflect a whole lot of times to then. Uh, Go to be directed to the seal of the frontier. In the midst of it, uh, Hibiki just grabs Miku and throws both of them inside the beam to wipe out both Miku Symphon Gear and Hibiki's own Symphon Gear. So basically, the pieces that of Gangneer that were inside her get wiped out, and her health is a okay. And also Miku gets uh, liberated from her brain control kind of thing and the sinful gear she was using. But in the midst of it, the frontier gets activated. And then we we get to know what the frontier actually is. The frontier, the frontier is actually a huge, huge, I would say vessel. It's a spaceship, more or less, that works in... Uh, with this kind of Nephilim energy, because the, apparently the heart of the Nephilim was the energy source they needed to activate it, and so Ved uses a whole lot of... At this point, the plot convenience is just out of the roof, really. Just go with it. So, just to, to get the situation straight, the frontier is getting out of the ground, so it's the middle of the ocean. What ground is this thing going to? Basically, it is uh, submerged into the waters and part of its ex structure is actual earth from the bottom of the ocean. Detail that the HQ of the second division now is a submarine that is near the position of the frontier. So basically when the frontier takes flight, the submarine gets picked up with it. Also, at this point Shirabe is... Uh, being kept kind of prisoner inside the second division HQ to because yes she took some anti linker because of Kirika and basically she she cannot defend herself now what happens inside the frontier because the frontier is basically basically the end game of the whole season inside this whole thing we got a whole lot of a lot of stuff going on. So, Hibiki does not have a Sinful Gear anymore. Miku does not have a Sinful Gear anymore. Basically, uh, using other people's Sinful Gear is more or less impossible. So, it's not like she could use Shirabe's Sinful Gear to, to fight. And, more or less, what we got is that Fer is controlling a huge spaceship. They don't know the power of they just know it basically can bring it bring down the moon natasha is actually is basically dying uh maria is more or less with fair at this point she's desperate for salvation and then we get uh this whole thing that for whatever reason chris just betrays subasa in the midst of the fight and joins up with the, the terrorists. Like, what in the hell? So, after all this goes on, Chris, Kirika, and Maria are basically the only, uh, let's say, bad Symphon Gear users. Tsubasa is the only fighting one left. And Shirabe, eventually, they let her go fight also, because she wants to help uh, both Maria and all the or her, or her friends. So basically, the, the end all be all is that Ver is the bad guy. That's the whole thing. Outside from that, what we got? Um, eventually, when Shirabe goes out to fight, Hibiki goes unarmed, also out to fight. 
but she goes more or less just to save Maria because at this point uh, Hibiki just wants just wants to help people and she sees that her not her powers themselves but the the song that led her to her powers is the key to save the thing the whole shebang at this, that point so in one of the best hacks we ever saw in anime history i'm kidding of course uh at some point maria is with gangnir activated because she needs to use some kind of um function of the frontier and the frontier just responds to the phonic game or always the phonic game right and we hibiki just appears touches the um, the gangnir on once so the dark gangnir she sings her her own invocation the the let's say the uh, the transformation music whatever and the gangnir just transfers to her for whatever reason and becomes the same one she had before i don't care just roll with it at this point no i, I don't fucking man man I, I don't care i don't care so at this point we got uh kirika and shirabe are fighting and, and this is an important 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 bit uh, at some point between kirika and shirabe fighting Kirika notices that actually the one with Finesso is not her, her, but it's Shirabe. Because they, they use this uh, kind of shield that is immaterial, basically. And it's something that uh, not even their Sinfogir can summon. So it's basically she sees that the hacks are with Shirabe and not with her. And so she sees that the, the, um, the way she did things towards the end she thought it was right was basically inhumane and so she tries to you know the thing and the thing is when Shirabe gets it she tries to defend Kirika from it so she basically takes the bunt of it and more or less more or less dies but in the in the illusion before she dies, she sees Finesse soul, and Finesse soul being af uh, after uh, meeting Hibiki, she's kind of changed her way of seeing how how people should uh, resolve her problems. So she she's she's a good guy now, and the soul itself sacrifices itself so that. Shirabe may leave. So basically, she she got an extra life. That's base more or less it. Now, what happens after that? So after they dust themselves off, and, and this, there is this whole touching thing about uh, Kirika and Shirabe being best friends again. We have the fight between Chris and Tsubasa. That at some point you would see like, well, this is clear bullshit. <laughs> And it was clear bullshit. Uh, Chris just faked the betrayal of the second division because she wanted, uh, let's say, a quick pass to steal Solomon's cane and um, enact her personal resolution, let's say. Because she sees that Solomon's cane was activated by her and it caused uncountable deaths uncountable suffering uh, unmeasurable suffering uh, whatever the thing is she sees that it is a sin that she has to atone to and so she fakes this betrayal to get Solomon's cane and destroy it basically she, she gets it she gets it and now with uh, back with back in the right side let's say Tsubasa, Hibiki, uh, Shirabe, and Kirika, and Chris are now reunited to fight uh, the actual bad guy that is Ver and destroy slash deactivate the frontier. The thing is, right, uh, Ver used some hacks to basically construct a new nephling out of the, the ground of the um, frontier. 
And, and the Nephilim is, is a pretty good opponent. It's a giant monster. It's basically another thing from Elden Ring. Uh, shouting out fireballs and destroying everything, regrowing limbs and whatever. And so at the last minute, we get Maria coming out with Serena's Symphon Gear that I don't know the name. They do not show the name in the in this season, I'm pretty sure. Just side note, I I got the name from Tsubasa's Symphon Gear. It's Ame no Habakiri. I don't it's a sword from some kind of Japanese folklore. Side note over. They fight the Nephilim, they kind of start to gain like uh, they need to <laughs> more or less at this point they need to restart the moon because the moon is the center point of the curse of Balao and the curse and the fact is if they reset it it will return to the its original orbit by itself and not fall on earth hopefully at this point the the six girls start singing their swan songs and Hibiki with her hex, the set harmonics kind of power, she conveys everything and sends it out to, let's say, the last point they have between them and the moon, that is, uh, let's say, escape pod that Ver uh, launched Natasha into, more or less. And so they reset the moon, but then uh, Ver uses uh, another hack to end all, that turns the Nephilim that was made from the um, the core of the frontier. Uh, basically, the thing's going to go supernova, so it's going to explode and basically wipe out the whole planet. Yay! And so the girls have to find a, a new resolution to the problem. They go there. They use their um, their swan songs. At this point, swan song isn't even a uh, uh, means to actually sacrifice oneself it's just uh, it's the song that we put on it's basically overdrive it's super saiyan whatever you want to call it they used it to amplify the power of Solomon's cane so it op- every time it summons noise it opens the doors to Babylonia's armory basically they just opened this huge ass Babylonia portal and kind of dragged the Nephilim into it and there's a whole lot of songs. The, the music never stops. It's so beautiful. My man, it's 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 awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It doesn't doesn't at this point is it's much like the end of uh Gurren Laga. It does not need to make sense. I, I it's, it just needs to be nice. I just need to see all these powers going off, all this happy things being said the, the music never stops it's awesome and, and that's basically it they they defeat the guy everybody lives happy ever after and then we go to season 3 uh, in a later date now about my opinion it's been like 1 hour and 7 minutes of recording but I'm still going about my opinion so objectively the store is a mess the store is a mess they have a lot of cuttings um in all stories about heroes and villains, the villain is always the one to move first. And generally, when the hero moves first, it, it is a trap, it, more or less. The thing about the villains in this case, in my opinion, is that it is really just a huge mess. I think they take too long to do, review what the frontier is and actually does for the whole thing. Because... They say it's the objective, but it never says what the, the objective actually is. So to activate the frontier, what does that mean? And it takes too long to explain that. They take like, I don't know, six to more episodes to even hint at what it would do. And for the most part, I... Uh, I think that messes up quite a bit in the case, not pacing, but the um, continuity of it all. That's more or less the only <laughs> criticism I actually have. I, I love 
I love this series to death. That I, I did not think that this season was so good. The, the season is pretty, pretty nice. You see a whole lot of things going on. You see character development between all the girls. You see the usual, maybe less this time, but the usual Yuri Beige. That is just awesome. We see a whole lot of things happening. The, the animation becomes way more smooth. Although it is not as detailed, I think, as the first season. It becomes way more smooth, way more uniform towards the... When we talk about how you see stuff, it becomes uniform in the characters and the, the frames themselves. The amount of fighting scenes they have is it's really nice. I, and they don't actually recycle a, a lot of frames. Not that it, that it is noticeable at the very least. And that's just nice. About the music, they upped the music so much from the first season to the second. And, and this is a thing about the series. That music is always the center stage. It is always good. You can always count on it. It is not just made for the sake of the anime. It is it is truly good. I really want to get the CDs from all the seasons. Aside from that, a, de a big detail that I really like is that they changed the, the battle music for all the girls. The battle music is the, more or less the same of the transformation music. They change it every time. It's really nice. The designs of the the armor and the weapons, they changed up a bit for the main girls from season 1 to season 2, but I think that was okay. It's not really noticeable. Basically, all around, good anime. It's a 7, not everything. Except it's the plot. The plot story is a, is a 6. It's a 6. Let's say it's a 6. Outside from that, seven, it's completely uh, competent. It's really good. You can actually watch it and like it. I really recommend it. And that's basically it. If you like what I do, if you like the show, if you like the rants I do, uh, please like, please follow, please subscribe, depending on the platform you are on. Please join the Discord. And that's basically it. I hope you stick around and see you next time. Bye.